Ciao a tutti, benvenuti al facile come italiano. Hello everybody, welcome to Easy as Italian. I'm Reza and today I've brought you a bomb. It's just a heck of a session, I assure you, and it's in the series of prepositions. Today, we're gonna talk about the preposition per, and we're gonna check it, we're gonna take all its guts out and see what does it have to say. So, tap the subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet, and also like the video, and let's start the session. So, we have about 16 usages for per in this video prepared, and the first one is when we wanna address something by using per, the preposition. Like how, for example, I say, questo libro è per me. Questo libro è per me. This book is for me. I'm addressing that to myself. Questo libro è per me. Or for example, I say, è fatto per lei. It's done for her. Okay, I'm just addressing things. It's pretty simple. We use it also in English. So let's go to the second usage. The second usage is for purpose, but we want to show a purpose by using per, the preposition. And in English, we can translate per in this usage as for or as. And we have this example here that says, Un asciugamano serve per asciugare le mani. Un asciugamano, a towel, serve, serves per asciugare le mani. For drawing the hands okay it's pretty simple you can understand it i'm sure about it let's see the third usage the third usage is to show a cause and here we can translate per as because of or due to so for example i can say something like um, lui non è potuto venire per la pioggia lui non è potuto venire. You know till this part, he couldn't come per la pioggia, because of the rain or due to the rain. And the fourth usage is pretty, pretty cool and common. Determined time. Here we can translate per as for or by. And now we can say something like una intervista per le sei. Una intervista, I have an interview per, per le sei. For six, for six o'clock. Or as a meaning for by, I can say something like um, Per l'anno prossimo avrò fatto una barca. Per l'anno prossimo, by the next year. L'anno prossimo, next year. Per l'anno prossimo, by the next year. Avrò fatto una barca. I will have built a boat. Futura anteriore, I have taught you. I will have, right? Avrò fatto una barca. Let's see the next usage. The next usage is again about time, kind of similar to the previous one. Here we translate per as for, and it's for continued time. For example, I say, abbiamo parlato per più di due ore. Abbiamo parlato, we have talked, abbiamo parlato per, for, più di due ore. More than two hours. We have talked for more than two hours. Abbiamo parlato per più di due ore. The sixth, seventh, and eighth usages are all related to places. And the sixth one that we're going to talk about right now is when we're going to say something like one side to the other, right? And here we translate per as along or through. Like, for example, I can say, Io guido sempre per queste strade. Io guido sempre. I always drive per queste strade. Along these roads or along these streets. Okay? Or as through, I can say something like, uh, Il mio volo passa per l'Italia. Il mio volo, my flight, passa per l'Italia. Passes through Italy. Simple. Let's see the seventh one. So, as I said, the seventh one is again related to places, and here we translate per as to. 
And it's when we want to talk about directions. For example, I can say un biglietto per Roma. I have a ticket to Rome. Pretty easy. Un biglietto per Roma. Let's see the eighth one, the last one related to places. The eighth one is something you need to learn by heart, but I assure you it's pretty simple. Here we translate per as around. For example, I say something like girava per la stanza. Girare, you remember, it means to turn, and we talked about it in the session of directions. Now it's in imperfetto conjugation. Okay, girava, he or she was turning. So he or she was turning per la stanza, around the room. He or she was turning around the room. We can add another pair if we want. For example, like girava per la stanza, per tutta la notte, per tutta la notte, for all the night. So girava per la stanza, per tutta la notte, he was turning around the room for all the night. The ninth usage, we can kind of relate it to places again. I mean, it's for when we want to talk about distances or better to say for measurements. And we have this usage in English again too, so don't worry about it. We can say something like, Io lo seguito per dieci metri. Io, I. Lo, lo, o. Okay, lo, objective pronoun, o, I have. So, io lo seguito, I have followed him, or I followed him, Per dieci metri, for ten meters. Io l'ho seguito per dieci metri. I have followed him or I followed him for ten meters. The next usage is when we're going to talk about the value of something. The value of something. Well, we have it in English too. Don't you remember? For example, I can say something like Lo vendo, lo vendo per Pochi euro. Lo vendo per pochi euro. Lo vendo, I sell it, per pochi euro. For a few euros. Lo vendo per pochi euro. I sell it for a few euros. I assure you the 11th usage, this one, is really something for engineers and people who like math. Well, we use it to talk about math, like in English, we say two times three. Now, here we say due per tre. Okay? So, literally kind of means two for three, but, well, it's a way to say it. Due per tre. Two times three. Fa, say, for example. Makes six or is six. So, due per tre, fa, say. The next Per is when we want to talk about opinions. We have it in English too. It will sound familiar when you hear it. For example, I can say, Per me, quella pizza era buona. Per me, for me, quella pizza, that pizza era buona, was good. For me, or better to say, in my opinion, that pizza was good. Per me, quella pizza era buona. We have four more usages, but before I start talking about the 13th one, I want to remind you to tap the subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet, and also like the video if you're finding this content useful and you're learning something at least. So now the 13th one comes, it's about when we are going to talk about uh, family origins, okay? I think when you see that example, you will learn it and understand it better. For example, I say, Lei ha ereditato mm, i occhi azzurri per via paterna. Lei ha ereditato, she has inherited, okay, or uh, she has gotten gli occhi azzurri, the blue eyes, per via paterna, from father's side. Okay? This is what I mean from family origin. So, le ha ereditato gli occhi azzurri per via paterna. As easy as that. Let's see the 14th one. 
And the fourteenth one is when we want to talk about a tool using per to mention a tool. And here we translate per as by in English. Okay. Once again. So let's look at the example. It says, Il professore ce lo comunicherà per email. Il professore, the professor, ce to us, lo, it. So, ce lo comunicherà, will communicate it to us. Per email, by email, via email. Easy, right? So, il professore ce lo comunicherà per email. The professor will communicate it to us by email. This usage of per will really, really become useful for you. It's for when we want to talk about similarities. And here we translate per as with in English. So per with, it's in a way I can use an example like this. Confondo sempre il mio zaino per il suo zaino. Confondo sempre. I confuse always. I always confuse il mio zaino, my backpack, per with il suo zaino. His or her backpack. So, confondo sempre il mio zaino per il suo zaino. I always confuse my backpack with his backpack. Simple. Let's see the last one. The last but not least, unfortunately, about per is when we want to talk about replacement. Here we translate per as for, or better to say, instead of. Okay, so for or instead of. I can say something like, ho fatto i compiti per mia sorella. Ho fatto i compiti. I did the homeworks. Per mia sorella, for my sister, or better to say, instead of my sister. Okay? Ho fatto i compiti per mia sorella. I did the homeworks for my sister, or instead of my sister. And it's done. I hope it has been really useful to you. I really tried hardly to gather these informations with my beautiful, cute, lovely spy. And, well, actually, just between us, she's getting over some things. So, wish her luck, please, for me. And now we want to end the session. I wish you a very great, great week. See you in the next couple of days. Have fun.